Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and in this episode, we look at how I'm actually going to fill up this fuel cell. So there were lots of questions last week of, okay, how am I actually going to fill up this fuel cell? Because the filling point is right up underneath here, um, which is where you would normally fill up this fuel cell, but obviously you can't use that anymore. It's just not feasible. Um, you could go through the back window if I never put a back window in, but that's just not, not, that's not the way it's going to work. So my plan has always been with this is to actually move the fuel filler. Now I can't put a fuel filler back through the side where the original one goes because it's actually sort of lower than the top edge of the tank. You'd only get about half a tank worth of fuel in it. And as I've cut the bottom of the tank out, uh, it really wouldn't hold that much fuel. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna remount a fuel filler up here. And I've actually gone out and got myself a fuel filler. And this is a, um, this is a lockable style, um, like sort of motorcycle type fuel filler that I'm going to mount into the, uh, into the car here. But it's more than just cutting a hole and bolting it down because this panel is not flat and the base of this is. So I need to do a little bit of um, working around, a bit of research and trying to work out exactly how I'm going to put this through and uh, get it mounted in and nice and flush. And so you can see there, that's roughly where I want to put the, uh, the fuel filler. And if we look underneath here, you can see that there is this access hole. So I need to sort of line it up roughly with that, where that current hole is and cut through and see how we go fitting it. Um, I think first things first is get a, a rough guide of where we want to put it, um, mark it out and cut a hole big enough at least to get the, uh, the filler portion through and we'll go from there. Phase one completed. I cut a hole in my nice clean new panel. <laughs> um, a bit of a wonky hole, but that doesn't really matter. And I'll show you why um, coming up soon. But basically you can see now that the filler fits in. It sits in in a, a, a nice angle here to, uh, to get down to the tank itself. But it doesn't, it doesn't sit level on, uh, on both sides. It sort of touches top and bottom and doesn't sit level here. Obviously that is not going to be good enough. Now, um, I briefly considered trying to beat, panel beat the, uh, this steel here to try and get it to the right shape. But I think the better way to do it is actually gonna be by making up uh, another plate to weld into this. So uh, that's what I'm going to start tackling now. And that means making up um, a bit of a, uh, a wooden buck to uh, start tweaking. All right, and for my buck, what I'm gonna do is I've got this uh, old hole saw that's uh, just the right size so that the, uh, the filler just fits inside it. So that should hopefully be the, just the right size I need. I'm gonna cut a couple of bits out of this old piece of uh, melamine and um, I'll show you what I'm gonna do from there. Okay, so that was a bit of playing around backwards and forwards, and basically I've made up uh, sort of my plate. This is gonna be the base of the, uh, the filler, where the filler's gonna bolt into. It fits in nicely, it lines up, all the holes are in it ready to go. So that will go in there nicely. And what I made up here is I made up a buck. So uh, these are the size of the flat section that I want uh, of this steel. And what I'm gonna do is uh, I've lined it all up so that I can bolt it all together. And, uh, I've got a couple of locating bolts here just to stop the, uh, because obviously there's a big hole in the middle of this uh, metal plate. If I just uh, bolted this bit together, I wouldn't make sure, it wouldn't necessarily be square. Um, so 
that's all lined up nicely now. And there's my buck. I can just uh, tighten that down. And um, now it's time to start trimming out around this piece just so I get the, uh, I don't want too much material here because when I start trying to uh, hammer it, it's gonna be, uh, the, the more material, the harder it is to shrink and stretch the material, or shrink the material to uh, uh, fit where I want it to. Okay, so I've uh, trimmed my piece to the right size. I'm just going to take it out now. That's about the size I want to be able to bend the edges down all the way around the edges of my buck. Um, but um, let's uh, start working out where we're gonna put this now and uh, see if I can sort of work out what I wanna bend, what I don't wanna bend, and how I wanna actually lay it out. Okay, so sitting this on here, I need to really work out what way up I want my filler, how I wanna orient it. Do I wanna orient it sort of facing towards the uh, the side of the car. I'm thinking actually because of the angle it's going to be on, I'm thinking more angle it sort of so it's uh, sort of square with the corner of the, the windscreen. I think that's going to be the nicest look and it's also going to be on the uh, on that sort of correct angle. That's the way uh, I think I like it there. So I'm going to mark it now where I want it and uh, then we can start working out how we're going to fold this piece to be able to sit down where I want it. Okay, so the way I've lined this up here, uh, basically what I've done is I've marked out where I'm going to trim off the top and uh, trim off the bottom because they're the highest parts of this current setup. Now, my plan with this is to try and keep this a bit higher than the rest of the body. I've seen others do it where they try and sink these in. The, um, the issue you've got to have then is you've got to put drainage holes in and get the, uh, the water out because obviously the water is going to go down and sit down underneath the, uh, the seal. I wanted this to sit higher than the rest of the bodywork so that I don't have to worry about like sort of water uh, rust issues as much. Let's start trimming off these bits now and uh, start sort of tweaking it to get it to fit exactly flat where I want it. All right, so after a lot of uh, bending and trimming, you can see the uh, effect I was going for now. This sits nice and flush all the way around, which is exactly what I wanted. So that is going to be a, uh, a nice little fit there. So now I'm gonna mark out around this piece and then I can cut it out and start welding it in. Okay, I've got it all trimmed out. It's sitting in beautifully. It's all cleaned up, ready to go. So now it's time to get out the welder and start trying to weld it in. At least I'm gonna tack it in to start with with the MIG. I might give it a go with the TIG and just see how I go. Play it by ear. All right, we have the uh, the mount in place, and I'm pretty happy with that. Um, it has warped things a little bit. Uh, there's sort of a bit of a there's a bit of a high there. There's a bit of low here. I'm going to have to panel beat it out a little bit when I get this back off the car. Another reason why I did all this while this is still removable, because once it's on there, it's really hard to get in behind here and get this thing all the way it needs to be. Um, but uh, we now have where the fuel fill is mounted. There's there's almost no low here at all. I think the uh, the water should run off quite nicely off of here. If if anything, there'll be a drop, and it'll be as it'll be a nice smooth painted panel. It's not going to be somewhere where the uh, water's going to be able to penetrate and uh, and rust away. So I think that is exactly the way I wanted it. All right. So thinking a bit further into how I'm going to proceed, I was going to proceed on uh, making the spout to join up with the filler, um, but. Thinking about that, I really want to have the tank bolted down into place perfectly where I want it first. And also I want this panel to be as straight as possible. 
And to do both of those things, I really need to take the back of the car back off again. I need to get this boot floor as flat as possible and mount the tank in. So get the, uh, the mounting points all done solid so the tank has actually something to bolt into. And once that's all done, then I can put it all back together again and, uh, and the spout can be the last thing I do. So uh, I think it's uh, time now to start pulling all this stuff apart again. All right, so now I've got this off the car. Um, you can you can definitely feel that there's a, uh, there, there's a there's a low here, but there's a high just just next to it here. Um, none of it is uh, sort of flat in the way it's supposed to be. So that's going to need a little bit of panel beating just to sort of tweak it and get it all just right. Um, this surface here is also not perfectly level at that level now. It's just sort of warped slightly in the um, in the mix. So to try and get that nice and flat again so that the filler will sit in there nicely. Um, and I'm not gonna go to town on all this though. I'm gonna get it pretty close, um, but I may as well uh, wait until I've filled in this panel here. So that's gonna be um, the next job on the list is obviously to fill in where the old filler was, because uh, that is also gonna need some panel beading to, uh, to finish it off as well. So uh, some work to do, let's get into it. It's amazing what a few well-placed taps with a hammer will do. Uh, that is all sitting much nicer and flatter now. This is all much better. There's still a bit of a low here. There's a bit of high here. I can, I can sort that out. It's uh, much better than it was. I've got the bulk of it out. But now my task is to move on and make up a patch panel to fit into this uh, spot right here. All right, so I've been cutting out my patch plate and uh, I've just stopped and I've had a little bit of a rethink. Um, basically what I was planning on doing was welding this over the top and then uh, trimming out the back afterwards. But I'm thinking now that I'll probably trim out the back first. I was gonna do it later just because this gives obviously some extra rigidity to this panel, makes it uh, nice and solid. But the issue is, is when I'm welding it in, I can, um, much more easily go through with a hammer and dolly with, uh, with obviously without this on the back. So I'm just gonna cut it out now, get rid of it and, uh, and just weld this in nice and flush. So uh, let's start trimming. Okay, so I've got my plate. I've given it uh, a few sort of tweaks, just uh, just bending it, just to match the um, the very slight curve of this panel because it's not dead flat. Um, and uh, I've got a very nice flush fit. It feels nice all the way around. Um, nice tight gap, so it's going to be nice to weld. So let's give it a go. All right, and that is quite nice. Now, um, I'm going to uh, grind back the outside edge of these uh, TIG welds now. And um, like there's a little bit of a, uh, this is sort of high here, this is low here. There's, uh, that's definitely a low right in this corner here. So there's a bit more, I did uh, beat it out uh, a bit as I went, as you may have seen, but uh, I'm gonna go through now, grind it back and uh, see if I can panel beat this and get this a nice, smooth, neat finish.
That was a lot of um, backwards and forwards shaping and beating, trying to get it all out. Um, basically what I was doing, I was running the, uh, the file over the top of it, just to, this, basically all this does, this is not actually designed to really take metal off. It's more just to highlight the, uh, the high areas and the low areas. So obviously the shiny bits where the scratches are are the high areas and the other bits are the low areas. And when you run that over, you can sort of start targeting and, uh, and gradually get uh, finer and finer with the uh, panel beading until uh, you, you get it sort of closer to flat. And that is pretty good. It is, uh, you know, it's, it's not 100%, but I reckon there's less than a millimeter difference in everything here. There's like so half a millimeter. So it's, uh, it's nice and flat for what I consider. So, um, but unfortunately, that is all the time I had today. So that means it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys. In 1966, Alfa Romeo replaced the Julia Sprint GT with the Julia Sprint GT Veloce with an upgraded 1600cc engine and a quadrifoglio badge on its C-pillar. By 1967, this was again superseded by the new 1750 GT Veloce, also known as the GTV. The iconic step nose was dropped from this model in favour of the more streamlined nose. On paper, this car only had a small power increase from 108 to 120 horsepower, but a big jump in torque, despite the RPM only dropping from 7,000 to 6,000. This made the car less revvy, but more drivable. In South Africa, the 1750 was continued until 1977, but elsewhere it was replaced in 1971 with the 2000 GT Veloce, which is what this car is. Boasting yet another capacity increase to 2 litres, it bumped power up to 130 horsepower. Recognisable by the slotted chrome grille and by the larger red tail lights which Jeff has swapped out here, in total over 37,000 2000 GTVs were built. Alright and we have another episode of Mail Time today and this one's a little bit different because I just got a package with a shirt in it and uh, nothing else. But uh, I assume it is from Matt Green. It's a nice big green shirt. Uh, Matt Green 16V. Um, so thank you very much, Matt. Um, I am I would possibly wear something like this, but uh, not that I encourage sending me shirts, but if you do, I'm a, a medium. This is going to swim on me. Um, <laughs> thank you very much, guys. And thank you, Matt, for, uh, for the shirt. And if you guys have got any sort of stickers or anything you want to uh, put up on the wall or whatever, uh, you can send them through to Homebook by Jeff, PO Box 1520, Barrel, New South Wales, 2576, Australia. All right, I'm really happy with how that turned out. I know this type of uh, fuel filler is not to everyone's taste, but I really <laughs> like these things. I, I like the, uh, the style and the look. Um, if it's not for you, that's, that's why it's my car. <laughs> All right. Don't forget to check out Alpha Parts by Jeff. I've also got Porsche Parts by Jeff. If you want any car parts, have a look at it and help us out. Let us know what you think. Price comparisons. Yep. All there. It's slightly free to use. Um, also, if you'd like to see the videos a day early, please uh, follow, support us on uh, Patreon. Not follow us. Support us on Patreon. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> you know how it works. <laughs> and... Um, for little tips and hints about what's going on along the way, uh, follow me on Instagram and Facebook. I, uh, I post a lot of stuff there. All right, guys. <laughs> hey, guys. See ya. And a quadrifolio, no, engine. By the new, in favor of the more streamlined nose. Yeah, that's where it was replaced in 1971 with the 2000 UT Veloce. <laughs> that's the best.